Hi everybody, my name is Andy. Welcome back to my channel. I talk about sex education and welfare topics on this channel a lot, which is a good reason to stick around, in my opinion. You know, you learn stuff. <laughs> but today is about training in sex education. So I get asked every now and again, what kind of experience, what kind of training I've had in sex education? And the answer is not much. A lot of it is self-taught, uh, videos and books and whatnot that I've read and watched. But I also have been to conferences and when I was an elected officer in my student's union, I was the welfare officer and I had training at the time on some basic sexual health. It was mostly aimed at students, uh, those aged 18 to 25, that kind of age group which is great, don't you think? Because those are the, exactly the kind of people that need the, the knowledge. But the truth is that I haven't really had any formal training in sex education. Having said that, being the welfare officer in my students' union, it kind of galvanized me into knowing this kind of thing, of being interested in this kind of thing. And I had a grandma and a granddad who were nurses in the NHS and my mum was a student nurse for a little while. So at least some of that has rubbed off on me, as far as I can tell at least. And every video that I put out on this channel, I've done some sort of research for it. If I'm talking about sex education stuff, I've uh, got my own knowledge and what I have learned in the past. And also I've done some research to make sure that my facts are right, as far as I can get them right. I will always get things wrong. I can't guarantee a thing, but I will endeavor to get stuff as accurate as possible. But you see, training in sex education is actually really important. And uh, although, okay, I haven't done any formal training, um, not everybody is going to be interested in it as me. You see, the problem is that there are a group of people who have to teach this to uh, kids in school, who haven't had the training, ha are probably maybe as not as interested in it as you and I, and they are the teachers. And this is a genuine problem. So uh, you might know that in England and Wales, there is going to be compulsory sex education from September next year, September 2020. Mm -hmm. Now that is fantastic. What there isn't at the moment, and this is where the problem comes in, is there isn't enough money, uh, there isn't enough uh, training courses, there isn't enough um, political will to teach these teachers, to train them up in order to deliver sex education to the children. Or equally, the schools don't have the budget, if they're not going to train their teachers, to bring outside specialists in. So, okay, I haven't had formal training, but I would still be a lot better than a sports teacher who hasn't had any training at all, uh, isn't really interested in it, teaching sex education out of a crib sheet, um, especially when they get asked a bunch of questions where uh, if they do know the answer, great. If they think they know the answer, but actually don't, could be quite dangerous. So there are situations where good sex education is good and bad sex education is worse than not having the sex education at all. Now, all is not lost. There are great charities out there that will almost certainly have to come in to teach some of the kids sex education. Uh, one of them is a charity called Sexpression. Uh, they are made up of students. I don't think they quite existed when I was an elected officer because um, I think they popped up a couple of years after uh, I was in my elected term. But um, what they are, are volunteers who get trained by uh, the national charity, uh, by the local groups that is in the national charity, and they provide services to local schools in order to deliver sex education. And this is great because you've got people who are interested in the subject, who can answer some of these more nuanced questions, and also have training to back it up. It's better than me doing it, right? <laughs> because I don't really have the training to back it up. 
And now if I was going to do this, I would go and get some training. I wouldn't just walk in and think, oh, I know everything, right? If I was going to actually go into schools and have questions which I could prepare for um, thrown at me, then I would do the training first. Absolutely. See, that's one of the great advantages of, of having a YouTube channel, right? You can stop. If you say something wrong or you know it's wrong, you can stop and say it again. If I'm going to do a video on something, I'll do some research, like I said. And therefore, uh, that should inform what I'm saying at least pretty well. It becomes adequate to good sex education rather than bad sex education. Now, of course, this isn't the fault of either the schools or the teachers. You could say it's the fault of the government to, for bringing in this regulation and not funding it. Um, although I think it's a bit more nuanced than that as well. I think it's unfortunate that uh, this great regulation, I, I, do, I wouldn't get rid of uh, not having compulsory sex education. And sex education is delivered now in schools. It's just maybe not delivered in the best way in some situations. Obviously, in a lot of situations, it's delivered in a pretty good way. A really good example is something I heard on podcast uh, last week. Uh, it was Doing It by Hannah Whittens, Hannah Whittens podcast. And she was talking to Justin, who was a sex educator, and he was making the point that we are often told that if you ever have penis and vagina sex without a condom, then uh, the person with womb is gonna get pregnant more or less every single time. That's not so true. Um, there is a three to nine percent chance that you'll get pregnant from a one-time um, penis and vagina encounter without any protection. And there's a few reasons for that, including uh, what time of the month the person with the womb ha is on, you know, where they are in their menstrual cycle. The fact that it's actually pretty hard to get pregnant. It's, it's not a, oh yeah, every time you'll, you'll have unprotected sex, it will definitely happen, right? Um, but of course, what, as a teenager, you will be told, because it's much easier to teach this than it is all the nuance, is, oh, if you don't have protected sex, then you're just gonna be pregnant. <laughs> now for stopping unwanted teenage pregnancies, that's fantastic. It absolutely works for that. Uh, and that's great. However, there are other things that we should take into account. And one of them is that um, people might think in later life, or even at the time, that they are infertile because they've had lots of unprotected sex and they haven't got pregnant yet. Now, the statistic is that if you have unprotected sex for a year, there's about a 60 to 70% chance that you'll get pregnant. And that is very much dependent on, of course, when you are having sex, um, how fertile you and your partner are. Uh, you don't have to be infertile not to be pregnant. Um, you could just have missed the optimum point every, every time, right? If it was that easy to get pregnant, then we would have had a massive population growth way earlier than we actually did. Now, honestly, how many of you thought it was actually really easy to get pregnant without protection? Even though we've got evidence to the contrary, people, married couples, trying for months and months before um, the person with the womb gets pregnant in that relationship. But of course, when you're in schools, you're talking to teenagers here, and they haven't got the life experience, why would they know? Why would they be taking notice of their friend's mum trying to have their third kid and it's taken them six to eight months to even get pregnant? Why would they have noticed that? They're not looking for it. So it all comes back to training. And again, in September, when we don't have enough people to teach our teenagers about sex education. What we do have between now and then is an election. And there is no right person, right party to vote for here. So I'm not going to advocate anything. But what you could do is um, put pressure on your local MP once they are elected to try and get the funding for the sex education, which is brilliant and should be in schools, but get the funding to train people, whether that be experts, which get brought in at the time to do to deliver the sex education or to train the teachers to deliver it for their school or more likely a combination of the two 
You can also donate to great organizations like Sixpression, like Brook. They are great charities and they provide uh, either courses or people to come and train your teachers slash deliver sex education for the kids. So obviously we've got a general election coming up in a few weeks time. If you can question your local candidates, then that's maybe something you want to bring up with them. Or after the election, write to your MP and ask them about this and ask them about the funding for the sex education which is going to be delivered from September. Do you know any organisations that will be great at delivering or uh, training people up for sex education from September? Why not leave those down in the comments down below? Uh, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. You can do that just down below. I make sex education videos every single week, so don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon so that you are notified of when I next upload. And I will therefore hopefully see you next time. Bye-bye.